this morning. I feel good. The spirit is in me. Thank my heavenly father for this day. Able to see another first Sunday. All out of us passed away this last month. But I just want to say this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing me to stand up this morning and read your holy word. On the first day of the festival of unlevelly bread, disciples came to Jesus and asked, well, do you want us to make preparation for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him that the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. Now when evening came, Jesus was reclining back at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad, Be began to say to him, one after the other, Surely, you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, the one who dipped it, his hand in the bowl will me, will betray me. The son of man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who prepared the son of God, son of man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who betrayed him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and when he gave thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is the blood of the covenant which is poured out many for forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this true divine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my father's house. When they all had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus told them, this very night, you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, have heard the last supper in Matthew 26, verses 17 through 31. And when we pray, I have a father, I have a father, 
Our Heavenly Father, our Heavenly Father, we we'll say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For another day never have seen before. I want to thank you. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. To stand up here in your presence this morning. God, I know, I know, you all have power in your hand. My Heavenly Father, as I stand here this morning, with your Holy Ghost power, with your Holy Ghost power, go out into the nursing homes. But I know you always is there in the nursing homes. Touch the ones, not able to get up and move around. I know who they are this morning. But I know, I know, I know you have all power in your hand. Someone is out in the hospital, uh, wishing they can get up this morning, laying on their sick bed. But I know your power, power, your power is right there with them right now. Not only in the hospital, uh, someone is at home, sick. Morning, come out to church this morning and praise you. By my heavenly Father, I know you are right there with them this morning. My heavenly Father, my heavenly Father, when the choir begin to sing this morning, give us, give us, give us your Holy Ghost power. Sings the songs of Zion. I have the Father as I stand here this morning. Uh, pray, put the Holy Ghost Spirit word in our pastor this morning. Show him the way, show him the way to bring your word this morning. My Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Father, my Heavenly Father. My Heavenly Father, I thank you in your Holy Ghost name, in your Holy Ghost name, I pray, amen. I'm going to try something a little different. Everybody can just want David to stand up. Let's stand up and sing this song this morning. Let's get up, God. Let's get up and sing this song. God has let us come here the first Sunday of another month. So let's represent him and him to sing this song.
I'd just like to make this announcement right quick. If any of uh, you like to take your kid downstairs, the daycare is open.
2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. Love to hear the word of God, the pages of the Bible turning. That is a beautiful, melodious sound. Our choir sounds good this morning. Amen. 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 Thank you, Deacon Tim Rivers, for Amen. opening us up. Amen. And it is a blessing and a joy to hear the sound of those pages turn in God's word. All right, what a wonderful sound. Right. You're just blessing my soul, girl. I tell you the truth. You'll find these words in God's word from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 and 10. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, would I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Therefore, verse 10 says, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. Amen. For when I am weak, <laughs> then I am strong. Is that not the truth? Is that not the truth? Thank God. Ushers, thank you for your diligence. Thank you for your, your servitude in God's house. Wonderful usher ministry. Thank God. I want to say this as before we get in this word. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And I was thinking about you, Mother Irvin, and I was thinking about Mother Ramsey. I just was walking by and I saw you pulling in Mother Irvin for Sunday school. And I tell you, that blesses my soul. Amen. Right. You are a soldier indeed. Amen. Amen. And then Mother Ramsey, Sister Hamilton, thank you. I looked out and I saw Mother Ramsey getting out with a walker coming on into God's house. I tell you, greater friendship, we got some soldiers in this house. Let's thank God for Mother Irvin and Mother Ramsey. You don't know how you bless my soul. I mean that. And bless our church. Yes, sir. Our church. No excuses. Y'all come to God's house. That is a blessing. We have many soldiers in this house. Many soldiers in this house. Here in these two verses of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to see the sufficiency, the sufficiency of God. And we're talking about the sufficiency of God. We talk, we're talking about how all-sufficient God is, which is defined as the adequacy of the provisions of the Lord, God Almighty, that can never be exhausted or never run dry. For those of us who worship the God of the Bible, we have the blessed assurance yes, that God's provisions towards us yes, will never come to a close. You see, God is more than enough to adequately handle all the needs of all the saints without running short of supply. Look at all the saints in this, in this sanctuary. All the saints around the world. Yeah. All the things that we go through in life. Isn't it good to know that God is adequately, more than adequately, to provide our every need? Whatever we stand in need. I'm talking to saints. I'm talking to the saints of God who has gone without, materially speaking. But God always stepped in. God was always right there to fulfill adequately our every need. See, I believe, I believe in order to receive help from God, we got to get honest. You can't get help by lying to yourselves. I cannot get help by lying to myself. It is a must that we acknowledge our weaknesses. You see, when we talk about acknowledging our weaknesses, we are not as strong as we want to project to be. We got to get honest. We are lacking in strength at times in our lives. There are times we are deficient in how we ought to be as saints of God. We come short a whole lot of time. And we get honest with ourselves because it is it is good to get honest with ourselves, beloved, because God is omniscient. God knows. You and I cannot fool God. So us getting honest with ourselves is for us. And crying out to God saying, Lord, I need you. I need your help. We are imperfected creatures. We need the perfection of Christ to help us and aid us and to get us through our imperfections. You see, every last one of us, we got an Achilles heel in our lives. There is something in every one of our lives that makes us vulnerable. There's something 
that can easily beset us, even when we think we're stronger than we ought to be. There's some things that can come our way, and before the end of the day, we will be floored and not knowing where to look. See, see, we are all going through trials and tribulations. Jesus declares in John 16 and 33, he says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. This is Jesus talking here. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. See, we are confident knowing that whatever we're going through in this world, Christ has overcome on our part. Christ has already won the battle mm, for us. God gives us comfort. See, being saved doesn't mean you're not going to have some tribulations. Being saved doesn't mean you're gonna have, not going to have some problems. Being saved doesn't mean trials are not coming our way. But isn't it a blessing to know Jesus Christ sent us another comforter to give us comfort when we're going through the trials of life. You see, there is gain. <laughs> Hear what I'm getting ready to say. There is gain in pain. I'm going to prove it right here. There's gain in pain. Don't go crazy because the pain you're going through. Just expect gain <laughs> to come your way. Now, if you belong to him, I can give you the utmost assurance that as you go through your pain, gain is coming your way. As the psalmist says, weeping, um, Kinsley over there, she over there clapping her hands. And we know her story. Not long ago, the Bible says, weeping may endure. Huh? For how long? How long? But what? What? Joy, man, comes in the morning. How many times have we had midnight pains? But did not joy. There's always morning after dark. Morning always comes after night. So, 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 so there is gain, shucks, in pain. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul gives a testimony of visions and revelations he had had, had by divine revelation of the Spirit of God. You see, Paul says, I knew a man. See, you got to get honest about yourself. Paul ain't talking about anybody else. He's talking about himself. Paul says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God know, somebody said, God know it, such a one, the Bible says, caught up in the third heavens. See, Paul was going through some things, but he had a Damascus Road experience, and he was caught up above what he was going through. You see, Paul says he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words. Words that cannot be uttered in this earth, in this world. They were far superior to our intellect. Boy, won't the Lord take you higher? Our youth choir used to say, he'll take you higher. And when the Lord takes you higher, he starts talking to you on a higher plane. Where, where there see those who see what you're going through can't understand why you're still smiling, why you're going through what you're going through. See, God is taking us to a higher plane, and He's ministering to our soul, telling it's gonna be all right. Has the Lord ever said to you in your soul, it's gonna be all right? See, that's being caught up 
anybody ever got caught up in the Lord? Now, now I know we all in here been caught up. You been caught up in this? You been caught up in that? I don't have to take it back too far. You remember we went to do our thing, what we were doing our thing, and the next day you say, man, I done got caught up. Well, when the Lord speaks to your soul, you can't get any caught up more than when the Lord takes you higher. Won't he take you higher? Won't he take you higher? Even when you're going through what you're going through, Paul said, I heard unspeakable words. Then he says, at least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation that was given me a thorn in my flesh. In the flesh. And not only did I have a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan buffeted me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. You know what thorns do? They bring us to reality. Because a lot of times we get caught up in ourselves. I just preached on idol worship the previous two Sundays. Things that we put before God. Someone that we put before God. But a thorn in your flesh that's nagging you over and over again. I'm talking to saved folk. It'll bring you back to reality. Who's in control? Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh. And then this messenger Satan buffeted, added to it. Lest he should be exalted. And then he says in verse 8, for this thing, this thorn that was in my flesh, he said, this thing, I besought the Lord twice, three times, that it might depart from me. How many times have you been going through something and you asked the Lord, Lord, get this away from me. How many times have you been going through things and you said, Lord, this thing is pricking me. How many times have you been through something and you say, Lord, help me. I tell you what a thorn to do in the flesh. It'll make you cry out. I need thee. I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come. Don't get disturbed about the thorn. Just keep on praising. Don't get it. Don't get. Don't get disheartened by the prick. Just keep on worshiping. Don't get sidetracked. Just keep looking unto Jesus Christ. Is He not the author? Is He not the finisher? Did He give you the faith? Do you believe because Him? Do you live because of Him? Do you move because of him? Do you have your very existence because of him? Shucks. Shucks. Am I talking to anybody here? Am I talking to anybody here? Is it clear? Is it clear? Talk back to me if it's clear. God is the all-sufficient God. He is the all-sufficient God. When Paul said, for this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might, three times is thrice, that it might depart from me, notice what the Lord says. Notice what the Lord says. Boy, I'm, I'm so glad he talks to us. He talks to me. He walks with me. Alone. Life's narrow way. Does he talk to anybody in here? Huh? Is he talking? Is he talking? Notice what he says in verse 9. And he said, and he said unto me, to you. Me, me. See, this thing has to be personal. Yes, Let me ask anybody up in here. Yeah. On, anybody got a personal relationship yeah. with the Lord? Yeah. I'm talking about you know him for yourself. Yeah. You ain't talking on behalf of somebody else. This thing is personal. Yeah. Notice what Paul, what the Lord says to Paul. Yeah. He says, he says in verse 9, and he said unto me. Uh-huh. What'd he say to you, Paul? What'd he say, Paul? He said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for thee. See, grace. Anybody get excited about grace? Man, I might have to pick this up next week. Because I got to get to verse 10. But I'll come back 
again. Oh, on next week. Oh. But I might have to stop right here with grace. Oh, praise, praise. Thank God praise. for God's grace. Yeah. Anybody yeah. get happy yeah. about the grace of God. Yeah. Thank God yeah. for God's grace. Yeah. You see, grace, grace is the merciful kindness yes, by which God yeah. Exerting yes, sir. his holy influence yes, sir. upon souls yes, sir. turns them to Christ, yes, sir. keeps them, yes, sir. strengthens them, yes, sir. increases them in Christian faith, yes, sir. increases increases knowledge, yes, sir. increases affection, yes, sir. Yeah. and enables them to exercise oh. the Christian virtue. Oh. Virtues, meaning he causes us yeah. to do the right thing. Oh. Even when we do the wrong thing. Oh, 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 anybody glad for grace? Anybody go oh, that was weak. So, that's all right. I, I preached to myself. Amazing grace. Huh. Amazing grace. How sweet. The sound that saved a wretch. See, I ain't pointing no fingers. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. I hear you, Kaja. I see your lips. I once was lost. But now, where you at now? Where you at now? But now, Blind. But right now, I can see. Well, who do you see? I see the Lord. How do you see him? I see him high and lifted up. Is he worthy to be praised? Is he worthy to be worshipped? Has he brought you through this? Has he brought you through that? Is I Back up. I'll pick back up next week. Y'all come back now, you hear? I'll pick it back up next week. But before I go, I gotta let you know I'm saved by the grace of God. I'm delivered by the grace of God. I've been bought by the grace of God. I've been brought from death to unending life. By the grace of God, thank God for grace. Hey, 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 let your own little tip. Y'all better get here for Sunday school next week. I saw some people warning the ushers at the door, trying to get in. Well, you might miss some next week. You better get here on time, because I might start shooting from the hip at 11 o'clock. Might start at 1045, because when I think about who got me here today, it wasn't my good driving. It wasn't my expertise. It was the grace of God. We said he's an old time God. And thank God he's an old time God. He's a right now God. But I'm, I'm here to tell you he's on time even when we ain't on time. <laughs> I 
come to worship God. I come to praise God. Sister, sister, yes, sister Benny, you singing that song, and girl, you show sure enough for singing. You didn't sing. You didn't sing. You sang. See, when we think about the grace of God, we ought to come with a mindset. Worthy, worthy to praise God. We always say from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Well, the sun rose about 645 this morning. Some of us didn't think about him until 1045. Got up this morning, rolled out of bed, got my clothes ready last night, went and shaved, went and took my BATH, got in my car, went by Walmart, got some water, <laughs> got some lamb's food, went by McDonald's, got me a, a, a McGriddle sausage with, a, with a, 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 a potato and a medium coffee with three cups, with three sugars and five cream, wait a minute, three, three creamers and five sugars. I was out on Hicks and Pike and I'm telling you how God brought me. I'm driving on the road. I look to my left over the splendor mountains and I saw the moon. Did y'all see that this morning? The moon, as it was light shining, the moon was going down behind the, behind the mountain. But in the east, the sun was rising as the moon was going this way. I said, look at God. See, I was on 153, having me some church, eating my McDonald meal, saying, Grace, Grace, See, I didn't wait to get to God's house to worship God. He woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. He put food in my belly. He gave me a, a, a shelter over my head. I ain't got to go way back yonder ways. When I look back over just this day, when I look back over and I think saw the moon going down over here and the sun coming up over, who can do that? Man, think they done something because they shot a balloon down from China. That ain't doing nothing. Put the stars in the sky. Put the sun in the sky. Make the clouds go where they go. You ain't done nothing. Job had gone through some trials and tribulations and he was disheartened and he got to the point of going to snap a guy. Now ask God, but don't get arrogant. Don't get snappy. You better ask with the Uncle Spirit. Job, Job was going off. God brought him back to remembrance. So he wanted all to bring you back to remembrance. The Lord said, where were you? I don't know you going through what you're going through. Uh, don't say that again. Well, Satan, the one who buffeted Paul's flesh, when he came to me, he, uh, the Father's God said, have you considered uh, my servant, uh, Job? Uh, so Job was taken care of. Uh, Satan couldn't handle it. He said, you can touch everything that he has. Uh, But you can't touch your soul. That's the grace of God, you are. Don't worry about material stuff. Thank God. By the grace of God, your soul has been redeemed. Is that all right? Is that all right? Let's stand. Y'all know where we're going next week. You ain't got to guess. Your Bible ought to open right to it. Ought to open right there. Read ahead. And look at the nuggets God's going to give us. I, I knew when I got the grace for the boy. Whoo, my God said, well, Lord, might let me go a little further. But boy, when I think about the grace of God.
Lord Jesus Christ is drawing you to faith and repentance. The Lord is moving on your heart. Oh, he will keep you in perfect peace. Yes. The Lord is moving on your heart. Come on. Come on, come, come, come. Come quickly. Let's sing that with him, y'all. Amen, amen. Come on to the Lord. Come on, the Lord is moving on your heart. By the grace of God. The Lord is moving on. Come on. Lord is moving on you. Come on. 